Hi everybody, thanks for coming tonight. I'm Scott Salato, I'm the Communications Director for the county, Rockland County. And um, first of all, before we get going with County Executive Day, just rise for the pledge, if you will. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Temperamental microphone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, we know that uh, the county executive has a lot to get through. We budgeted about an hour for tonight's town hall meeting. We've done three of these thus far this year. We have another one next month at the library in summer. And the process that has worked for us over the past couple of months, back to June, is index cards. We don't have, we only have one wireless microphone. That's for the county exec. So I promise I'm the one who's going to be reading them from right here. I won't do any editing. I won't uh, do any uh, funny business with the questions you ask. It's, it's important that we're transparent. We want to bring you the information that you want from us. And we really appreciate you coming out tonight. You know, the competition was the Cuomo Astorino debate. So this is much better. Thank you for coming. Um, one other quick note uh, if you have a question and you have a follow up, Kelly here, just raise your hand. She'll bring you another card. If you have a pen, if there's a follow up to a question that you want more information about, she'll be happy to run and bring it up to me and we'll go from there. Uh, without further ado, County Executive Day. Thank you, Scott. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you. It just tends to be lower or something. I don't want to chase Test one, two, three. This is, hello. This, this okay? Yeah. First of all, thank you all for being here, uh, coming down tonight to uh, another town hall meeting. As Scott said, we've done a couple of them. Uh, I see a number of members of law enforcement here. We're going to spend a bunch of time on that particular issue for obvious reasons. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, I just want to co cover some topics. Um, the 2015 budget, and in general overview. Uh, I want to visit and get some background to everybody so we understand not just the budget, but some other items. Then we'll have a question Q&A uh, on the issues that are concerns to you. First of all, there needs to be an understanding that this county was $42,000 away from defaulting on January, 3rd of January. We are, we in fiscal year, in very, very sorry shape. It is turning. We're getting better. But it doesn't change the fact that we are a very, a very fragile situation. Um, I feel very good about the fact that it's a positive about this county, but it doesn't change the fact that from a fiscal perspective, we are not far from completely going off the edge. That is very, very important for me to understand. Um, 2015 budget, we ended up with a 2% tax increase. This is the first time that we've been under, under the cap. Um, the cost of that budget is $1.67 a month, about $20 a year. The um, Getting to the 2% was not easy. We had been doing a top to bottom organizational review. Uh, there have been numerous changes. We have had three tax increases in the county local government, 30, 18, and 12. We have to be done with that. We are killing ourselves. This is why I was insisting on remaining in the cap at 2%. People in this county needed that. And there's no other way of saying that other than it was necessary. Um, I continued my own perspective. I continued my 10% cut in pay. I thought that was appropriate for one more year. The, um, we have Handle off 111 positions in 2015. The savings about 8.9 million dollars. I'm sorry, 6.8 million dollars. During 2014, we didn't wait for 2015 to start the new budget. We started working at the beginning of January of 14. We started cutting back the operations of government so we would not have to face an absolute crisis in 2015. Even with all that work, we we shed 60 some odd jobs and we saved 4.8 million dollars. We still ended up in a situation where we are right now with, with laying off and, and outsourcing people, which is, is obviously a very, very troubling situation. Um, I want to just look at this. I'm going to spend a little time on the Sheriff Patrol and what's going on in that particular area. This is some folks in the contract agencies here, I think, also. Um, 
Anybody who even remotely knows me has to know that the very last thing I ever wanted to decide to do was propose laying off of this office. As simple as that. Um, I'm a law enforcement person. I spent many years in the NYPD. It was a very, very difficult thing to propose. And I'm saying propose for a reason, because I want everybody to understand the process of it. The way the budget system works, we just can't say we want change. We have to actually put in line by line changes in order to restructure this department. And I'm going to say for the record here and now, the sheriff's department needs to be restructured. There is no getting around that. The shame of it is, is that the way it is breaking down right now is through potential layoffs. So that's, that is something I want everybody first to understand. Um, when you look at the number of calls, you look at the caseload, you look at the department itself, which is very top heavy, when you look at the uh, caseload, you look at the amount of crimes, department of crimes compared to what was assigned, there is a need for restructuring for the sheriff's department. And from where we are right now, even to a point where we have two other sheriffs, how many counties have two other sheriffs? Suffolk, that's it, and Rock. Too many bosses, too top heavy, and that is in the assessment, Chief I know there's a lot of talk about that. Um, I will say this, you can't cherry pick that report with one paragraph to make a conclusion. I looked into someone who was a law enforcement executive, and there were many, many things in there that troubled me, which I'm not going to get into publicly because I don't think that's right for the public. Uh, but the reality is, if you go back and look at the report, there should be things in there that should trouble you also, as well. Um, the contract agencies, uh, contract agencies, we provide in the county about 24% on average of the uh, funds that you need to function. Again, we ended up in a situation, and a lot of this is because of a late developing situation in the budget process. This was not something we were looking to do immediately. What we were looking to do was to restructure the Sheriff's Department over time. We were looking to reassess contract agencies by putting them under the oversight of um, departments so we had a better sense of how taxpayer dollars were being spent. The reality was is that we ended up very late in the game with the situation where we had to come up with a significant number of dollars, and that is what brought us to painful decisions we, that I had to make. And it's on my show, I'm not going to lay off a report or anything else. Um, and to be clear, the report, you're right, the report did not say to get rid of the patrol division. Didn't say that. They looked at enhancing it, interfacing it better with some of the specialists, but it also pointed out to many things that I believe, I believe frankly, from my perspective, we could do better. And I'm hopeful that going forward, that is going to happen. I want you all to know one thing is this morning I met with three members of the legislative leadership. We spoke in broad terms about where we should go together because this is not going to be a simple matter. Ideally, we want to get through this without hurting people. That's the goal. And the way we do that is not the way the chair of the legislature starts off by sending a press release out saying everything I'm doing is the act of the devil. That's absurd. You start by talking to people who are on the other side of the building and under, making them understand that you also want to work with them, to work with the sheriff, to work with our agencies, and with all trade very shortly, to try to find common ground. Because the one thing everybody is forgetting here is that the days of going to the legislature and have one legislator wave a magic wand and come with magic dollars that were never there, that those days are gone. We have the state control of watching this guy. And frankly, if the controller wasn't there, I wouldn't put up with it anyway. So those days are gone. All these years where everybody's jobs are saved, we go back when the hospital was going to be closed, the jobs are saved. It put us in the hole. We have a $138 million deficit, specifically because nobody wanted to make a decision, specifically because of making up magic numbers. We can't do that anymore. So we have to work together and collectively and collaboratively. And that's what I told the legislature today. And I believe we're going to do that. Because the important thing that the people of this county include the people who are sitting here right now. So I want to emphasize that these are proposals to a budget. There is about six weeks to go as it relates to the final budget. As it relates to my position, what I'm looking to get done is a responsible budget that respects everybody, worker and citizen. And sometimes we work with citizens of both. The same people complain about high taxes. Happen to be working with this kind of also. 
So we're all trying to balance that right now. So I want to emphasize that to everybody, whether it be our members of law enforcement or our contract agents or any people who are listening to me right now. Um, a couple of other issues, not budget related, directly, but are very, very important. I mentioned earlier about how fragile this economy is in this county, not the economy, the, the uh, fiscal condition. Summit Park Nursing Home. Uh, that is, had, we have a contract signed. We're waiting to go to, um, waiting to go to, uh, to closing on that. And we're coming to a point where that closing has to happen. We are bleeding. We are hemorrhaging. We cannot afford to lose any more money for the same reason why we're in the same fiscal distress we are in right now. So we're looking to move forward. Um, to make sure that sale occurs. We've had to fund the facility through the year 2015. Think about the millions of dollars that are there because we have to fund it to continue it. And think about the distress that's being caused because of the shortfall on the other end of the budget. So this is what the dynamics we're dealing with right now. Um, we're hopeful and we have to deal with the state, the governor, the governor's office has been helpful, believe it or not, uh, trying to get involved the health involved. But we've got a lot of moving parts to sell in the facility. And we've got a couple of close calls already where we could not sell it. So we're hopeful it moves forward. The sooner the better, only because it, it helps balance the, the finances of our county. Um, the popular bus washing issue, um, somehow there were some folks who believed that cleaning your vehicle prevented it from turning into a wrong tangle. I, I don't know why they believe that, but they did. Um, we talk about waste of spending, nearly $4 million added to a contract. Think if that was passed, how much worse would we be shaped to be right now? We four million dollars, we be a million dollars short. So thankfully, that did not happen, and I have to give a lot of credit to the folks who got engaged in that and all their legislators. So it was, it was something where people got involved and said that no, this is not the way to go. So anybody who took that tack, I want to thank them for helping all of us out, our taxpayers. Out of that matter. The legal consistency act, that was another uh, attempt to uh, ostensibly help a gentleman at the Clarkstown Inn, uh, the Clarkstown Inn, I'm sorry, uh, with a third floor, uh, third floor tenant, uh, with an egress issue. Uh, what it became, what it, what it, be, what it became, would have been an all, a whole, whole wholesale assault upon zoning. It would have allowed any village or any town to declare any place in the historic area and be exempt by these, by these type of laws, such as egress, which to me is crazy. So again, I thank the people who paid attention, who did something I, I believe saved this county in many, many ways, and placed it like under, under the surface so, um, We're working very actively with the Legal Housing Task Force, with other parts of our county government to deal with the legal housing. Um, we just had a fire in Kayser, I believe it was. Uh, numerous, uh, numerous uh, units, 12 units inside the home, wood wood book, wood book. And all this is about, this is about greedy business. That's all it is. And who I said, just slap on the wrist and say it's a cost of business, and puts everybody at risk, especially our, our first responders, our fire officers, our police officers, who go to these, these, these uh, fire traps. And it's a matter of time for the tragedy. And uh, I've got very good people working this. The health department is going to be very involved, which is again why the Legal Consistency Act had to be defeated because it would have taken away that strategy we're working on in order to, uh, in order to deal with this issue. Uh, charter reform. Um, major issue is termed as uh, charter reform is on the ballot of the member. Uh, I will say very simply this, I don't want to take up too much time. The charter reform efforts that have been put forth, they are housekeeping. They change some dates of submissions, they change uh, how long Appointments can be had before you go to the legislature by a couple of weeks. Um, they change the date the budget comes in, which we did early anyway. We didn't have to have a lawyer to tell us that. Um, it changes the language of the charter to be uh, gender neutral, which is nice. But these are not groundbreaking issues. What's missing are the things I keep hearing from people. They want to hear about term limits. That's not there. They want to hear about appointments to public office without elections. That's not there. They want to make sure if you get elected as a legislator that you somehow have a job in a town government somewhere that a few extra bucks, that's not there. And with those things not there, I'm recommending to anybody within the sound of my voice to vote no to that charter. I want to see you come back. 
I want to see the people who's kind of an opportunity to vote on things such as term limits. This is not about whether I think term limits are right or wrong. This is about giving you the opportunity to decide whether it's right or wrong. That's it. And this, I, and if you hear certain <laughs> legislators tell you, well, we can, we can deal with it next year, a bill could be submitted, we'll hear it, we'll you know something? I submitted term limits January 11th, January 12th, January 13th. According to legislative rules, it's supposed to be heard with the third, committee in 30 days. It did not get heard in committee until the latter part of 2013. It was summarily So if you believe that that's going to come up again, I have a bridge to sign. That ain't going to happen. So I'm recommending people vote no. I will pledge you right now. I will support every change that they're trying to put through now. But I want to see meaningful change that speaks to the issues that people want to speak on. And that is term one is the most, most important. Um, other than that, I've got a bunch of questions. Uh, most of them are focusing on the sheriff's department and also not-for-profits. There are two that come up with uh, other job eliminations at the county level proposed in the budget. Uh, are there other job proposals that, are, that will be eliminated in the budget? Yeah, there are. There's 111 total. We are outsourcing the uh, in, in Building A, uh, laundry, radiology, and security. Um, there are, other, there are other jobs that we are eliminating. We have eliminated jobs all along the way. You'll notice there are commissions who used to work for the county no longer there anymore. I'm sure you're correct, you've seen that. There are deputies that used to work, we've left the people up, the job. we didn't fill those jobs. We reduced the payroll just for, for efforts of overtime control, not filling jobs, realizing that 2015 was gonna be very, very difficult. Do we try to get ahead of the curve as much as we could? We reduced our payroll from 6.6 .6 to 6.1 million dollars. That's a 10 million dollar annualized savings. We in fact generated 4.8 million dollars in savings in 2014 by the efforts that we made going in. So yes, there are unfortunately other layoffs uh, or outsourcing going on proposed, but I'm going to emphasize they're proposed. Um, it would bring our total workforce down to under just under 2,000, which was 3,000 some six years ago or so. Uh, that doesn't happen without extra money being given by the people who do the job. So I just want to acknowledge that also. But there are two questions that there are uh, other people who live in county employment as a proposal. Okay, on to some sheriff's department questions. When you abolished the sheriff's patrol in your budget, did you even consider the increased cost to towns and villages? Thank you. If the restructuring of the department goes as it should, there will be no increased cost to towns and villages. I look, at the, I look at the numbers of calls that are, that are responded to by, and these come from the sheriff's numbers, not by any of the report. The numbers don't support it. The numbers do not support it, period. And you know something? If the, the concern, I keep hearing the concern about public safety, which obviously I understand. There are 83 vacancies countywide in local police departments. Why? Why? Why are those positions not filled? At least half of them. Why? And I found out because it was important, obviously, the proposal as, as draconian as one that I had to put forth. I want to make sure I got places for cops and goes. If, in fact, this ever does come to fruition, which I hope to God it does in my own way. But the, 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 the impact upon local town governments, when you look at the numbers of responses, the impact is not there. The, uh, a couple of these questions dealing with the Anamone reports, uh, the independent reports submitted by Chief Anamone. Uh, did he state the sheriff's patrol or its uh, specialized units play important roles in the towns and villages? Yes, he did. There's no question. Of course, it played an important role. Your cops. Of course, it played an important role. Is it? Is it? it do we? When I look at the reports that are submitted to me from the sheriff's department, and I see one response for tour for the special overall response specialty K9 BCI, one response for tour and I see one response per day outside of that. And these are the Sheriff Department's own documents. We have averaged two, maybe two cars out, three tops on patrol in a given day. This is what I'm told from the Sheriff Department. I would submit that, yes, it's great having two or three more cars out there. I'm not gonna quarrel with that. That's a public safety issue. No question about it, that's important. But is it critical to public safety? 
I just don't see a couple extra cars out there on patrol. There's a, a 1013 in Nyack, and you're in Slowsburg. You know, I, I, again, it, these are decisions that have to be made when you're in a situation like we're in. You know, and again, when we talk about the cost, every dollar that is spent for law enforcement or anything else in government comes from taxpayers. So again, if the impact to the local towns and villages but there's vacancies. Why do we not have police officers buy for those jobs? If the towns are saying, we need the county sheriff's department to pick up the slack, there's something wrong with that. Because some towns will use you more than others, some towns not so much. You know, so the, the question begs an answer is, why don't we have more officers being hired at the local level? A couple of more on this report. Uh, did Chief Hannibal recommend reducing the sheriff's patrol in the report? No, he did not. He, Chief Adamall gave us an operational assessment. I've heard about other reports that came out, you know, before that fiscal reports. He gave me an operational assessment of the department, and some of these I'm sure have seen. He did not recommend getting rid of patrol. He tried to look at different ways as to how we can improve what we have. In order to get structural change, in this particular case, there needs to be, unfortunately, a drastic step in. Because we don't have the number luxury this year of letting us go for a year. You know, every every year, and every year I hear that there's money found and brought back to county government by the sheriff's department, by the sheriff. He finds extra money. After hearing that two or three or four years, does, does that beg the question to keep finding extra money? Maybe it's too much money to begin with. I mean, it, it, you know, the, after a while, you have to start questioning this. When I looked at the report, and I encourage everybody to look beyond that one little part that talks about the, the, the benefit of the patrol division, which I'm not going to borrow with. Look at the case load. Look at the responses. Look at the entirety of the report. Look at it as, look at it as a police officer or a police supervisor. But just take a step back and look at it. And I think more of this will become a little more apparent. You might have covered this in one of your earlier answers, but uh, we have a lot of questions on the Sheriff's Department. The budget, does it provide relief to taxpayers if the towns and villages are left to absorb the cost of the police services provided by the Sheriff's Patrol? I think I think we covered that already. We're, we're not, ideally, we want to maintain the specialty units, and that's another thing that came up. Obviously, with civil service rules, it doesn't work that way. My job is to look at the financial piece, the operational piece is the sheriff's position. Every organization I've ever seen that has gone through restructuring has the same challenges, and it has to be addressed. But I don't have the ability, nor do I want the ability, to go in and say, pick these people. You know, I have to put in a line by line uh, no approach. I just can't say six and a half million dollars. It doesn't work that way. So that's, that's where we are. It's going to be up to the sheriff, who's an operational commander of the department, to make the change necessary to make the department more functioning, more efficient. And I, I gotta say something else also. Um, every part of county government so far, in the time I've been in as a legislator or now county executive, has had to do more with less. I will tell you, in my experience here in Rockland County, with the sheriff's department, especially this year, I we get calls for vacancies, we get calls for promotions. I don't get we don't get any calls about you know doing more with less. You know, and that's that's troublesome. We have to work together to try to make this county run, run more efficient, because we don't. We're going to go under. I don't know how much more plain I can make that to everybody. We're going to go under. We're not that far. One misstep at this point, we're done. Despite the you know, sense of optimism we do have right now, you don't go from being 42,000 away from the fault in January of 14 to having magic on October of 14. We are still very, very fragile. And again, to this particular issue, we are trying to work through a solution that makes sense to everybody. And I want to emphasize that this is not a done deal. Like I said, again, I've already spoken to legislators already about trying to find a path to, to overcome, meet and overcome the challenge that's in front of us. We have a challenge in front of us. We don't have the money. And we can't raise taxes anymore. We can't. I understand how much more it will cost if all the jobs are brought back without a balance on the other end. I understand. It's not a lot of money. It's X amount of dollars per month. It's probably, you know, 
nine bucks a month or something like that. If we restored all the jobs, it would be about eight bucks a month. But every year, we hear the same thing. It's only this much per month. It's only this month per year. And guess what? It keeps adding up. We drive people out of this county. So I, I am not adverse to work with the legislature to get these things all addressed. But the days of just doing whatever the hell you want to do, it only you guys and gals, but the days of just doing whatever you want to do, in any way, shape, or form, are done. We can't afford it. We're killing ourselves. This county's got a $138 million deficit. And you know, I said last year when I got elected in December, December 6th or 8th, I said the deficit is going to probably be around, I predicted about $140 million. And people said, that's crazy. Guess what? 138.5 was ordered at the end, for the end of December. It was 1.5 million off. Not that I had that kind of money laid around. But I was close. This is getting bad. I, and again, it is, I call this a crisis. It is a crisis. And the way you solve a crisis is you put your shoulders into it together and you try to fix it. And there's one of the reasons why I'm glad so many of you were here tonight, because you need to hear this. I believe there's a path and a solution. But the days of doing it the old way are over. We can't do it. We can't continue to lie to the public, which is what has been going on, making up numbers, which is what's been going on. Those days are done. I won't stand for it, and I won't stay in control of it. But we have a path as long as we work together. And I'm very happy. I have to give credit to the three legislators who met me this morning. It was a good conversation. We were on the same page. We're going to try to just shut the noise out from some of these other folks who just are interested in political points. We've got to get this fixed. Finally, because we don't, we don't. Sorry for the answer. I can answer this one. Uh, copies of the 2015 budget, they're available right now for you guys. If you go to the county's website homepage, rocklandgov.com, there's a link there. You can, right on the homepage, you can find it there. You can download it, I think, in a PDF, and also you can look at it in an HTML format, so it's there for all to see, and you can download it. Everybody just got excited out there. I just dropped water about the election. Thank you. Um, the county executive. There are so many questions about not-for-profits and okay. different agencies. Uh, why are we proposing cuts to not-for-profits? Um, proposed cuts would have devastating effect on NIAC Center. Um, there's a whole a bunch of different agencies trying to get, get taken. Okay, the same situation that confronted us late in the budget process, what is it, what is it position? We had to make a decision. Forget the way. I had to make a decision. Well, I have people advise me, yes. Whose decision to file now since it's gone? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna walk away from it. Okay? Did we want to propose layoffs? No. Did we want to cut contract deeds hundred percent? No. Our goals were to, to restructure the department over time, over the year, excuse me, over the year, and contract agencies to get it handled. Because we had meetings with the legislature about trying to identify each contract agency. In other words, how, how, what, what do they do? What, what's their purpose in life? They want to walk them in, what we do in government. They do it cheap, they do it less of an impact on taxpayers. But is there a difference between a food pantry and a social club? Now, I think most people would probably agree there is. That's just me. We could not get clarity from the meetings. We had legislators in um, for three weeks, I guess, or a month, coming in and out, going over the budget, the challenges. And we just wanted to get a sense of, okay, can we have a tier one, tier two, and tier three? Tier one, providing the most basic and vital of services. Tier two, something in the middle. Tier three, for the social, I mean, dance clubs, things of that nature. We couldn't, some of the legislators feel that the dance clubs, and I'm not criticizing, I'm just observing at this point, are just as important as all the others. Somebody could need food, their food insecure, they don't know where the next meal's coming from. That's as important as some people's point. You have to make a decision. So we couldn't get that. So as you know something, we'll do it ourselves. So we started breaking that down. But again, a late break in the budget process came. And that is really what really forced our hand. We have a, a $10 million hit. Well, law, sorry, hit. It's a hit. The $10 million demand by law upon the budget. 
Deficit Reduction Act, which came to us, finalized, absolutely have to obey, the, board, the 1130 the day before we released the budget. That's how much time we had to react to it. Now that's another issue we spoke to legislators about, and they'll, I think even they feel there's some issues with that, again, it's more that was proposed and passed by the legislature last year. Uh, but those numbers are now becoming um, more clear as to what the impact would be, and maybe it's not an appropriate number. But again, something we did is something discuss this morning. So we, we're not we're not looking to get rid of all the all the contract agencies, external agencies. But everyone felt the same was in the same situation. We said, you know something, we're going to have to defund them, and with all the good. And again, what the good you folks do in contract agencies, look, I, I've been involved with boards, involved with a lot of these agencies for a number of years. I know what you do. I know what value you bring. But the balance now was we're proposing more layoffs, we're proposing layoffs of people who are protecting us in the streets. How do we give them a million dollars away total? You know, like maybe fundraising to make up a slack. So again, difficult, difficult decision, no question about it. But again, it's a proposed budget, and I will tell you very simply that it is something that we're going to, we're going to make the administration every effort to work with the legislature, calm our minds, people who are looking for a solution, as opposed to political points, and that's what we're going to do. Where is the tax base in Rockland County? It's changing. The tax base, I guess, talking about uh, economic growth and I guess this is with Vermont a little bit. There's a lot of questions here regarding what's going on with the Vermont mess. Uh, how much money do we still owe? I can get some of these too. The, 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 Mar the Vermont mess is in the wall. Was it, I think we had to borrow two hundred forty-two million dollars to get out of that mess. Something along those lines, and we're still feeling that. There's no question about it. You don't take a hit like that countywide um, and not feel it. But to, to the issue of economic development, and this is important. Um, this administration has. Maybe one of the cornerstones of our effort in economic development is to bring business here. Uh, it's been as, as, as simple as <clears throat> being involved and engaged in the applications that come forth in different towns and villages. For example, uh, Park Pharmaceutical, let me know where it is, Chestnut Ridge. Um, I, um, they came to my attention that they were looking to get um, an expansion at their location. Uh, for a garage, they wanted to bring a bunch more employees in. Great idea, sounds fantastic. Um, employees, that's you, you can ask better than that. Not even expand the footprint beyond where they work. Um, but their applications were not going through quick enough because it was a, not an understanding <coughs> that in the private sector, there are timelines, things have to happen at certain, certain points. If they don't, opportunities are lost. So, um, I ended up going over to a member of the Rock Economic Development Corporation, my own economic development director. Uh, we sat down with Parr. Uh, I called the mayor up. And, uh, Sam Preston was, uh, was great. I mean, he, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a balance at the strike because you don't want to call the mayor or a supervisor and tell them what to do. It's not right. It's his village. But I called him up and said, look, this is the situation. I would not expect a planning board or a zoning board to understand the time issue. They are looking at what's coming in, and they, it's the summer. Who the heck wants to come to extra meetings in the summer? I get it. Um, but what he did do, he did uh, hear what I had to say. He did convey that to <coughs> his board members. And the approval happened by the beginning of September. So instead of losing a couple of people in New Jersey, we had nothing to go by gas um, We ended up getting additional employees here in Rockland. Economic development is not um, not a sexy topic. It's not something that's going to generate immediate relief. But frankly, I'm at 63 years of age. I didn't get into this as a kid in politics. We've got to fix this county. And one of the ways we're going to do it, I think, to your question was brought up, we need to provide a foundation and a platform in this county of economic strength and wealth and value. We don't do that when we more relying on taxes. Can't keep the moving line on taxes. So we're, make, we're getting our small victories here and there. These are things that 10 years from now, when I'm gone, hoping that I'm gone, um, that 
people went back to 2014, 2015 to say, you know, so Brockton County went on a different path. They engaged in responsible development. They didn't disrespect homeowners. They brought, they brought smart growth in. They brought businesses in. They got to pay the taxes now and supplant the need to keep going tax base for the dollars. Because that, that is key issue. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. This is why I have a deputy county executive, Mark Wood, to do it. Um, we have a CFA process. That's a new, the new paradigm. Years back, the senators and assemblymen, assembly people would be bringing dollars back, member items. The governor established a, uh, a council, uh, council for economic development, uh, called the CFA awards. Rockland County, three years running, had not gotten one priority project and came in dead last every time, every competition. I was on the economic development committee as a legislator at the time. And we would have the RBA come in, Dr. Cliff Wood, who was on the board, would come in, a representative, uh, and they would just not get anything done. It was just, nobody was getting the idea that there's a new process, that there's real money out there. And you bring money to a community, it's less money we need to take from taxpayers. You know, it, it, or less money we as taxpayers can spend on something. So we engaged very aggressively in January. Let's see what uh, we engaged in a very, a very aggressive uh, effort to make sure everybody understood the dynamics of the, of the process, that they understood how to do it. We actually had people, companies come in, municipalities come in, train them how to make these applications. When the smoke cleared, we were number one in the Hudson Valley. We got $9 million of awards and we got five priority projects. We never got one. These are the kind of things that we do now. It will generate a platform going forward. One of the one of the groups that actually won this award was Juanio, and that was just an amazing, an amazing situation. That Juanio get I think 1.2 million dollars um, for an expansion to their facility. These are local jobs. These are local people. Uh, you can't ask for better than that. So. These are, again, small victories. They're not, they're not sexy. They don't make papers that more than welcome. But uh, it's something that's going to make this county. One of the things that make this county well. I have several more questions on the sheriff and the, the contract agencies, but I wanted to squeeze in a couple of others. This one I am editing a little bit. Uh, it revolves around overdevelopment and illegal housing in Ramapo. The efforts underway to squelch that. I think I touched on this a little bit earlier, but essentially what we have is we have um, a situation where greedy landlords uh, risk people's lives, couldn't care less about what happens, take advantage of the folks who can least defend themselves, um, invite a tragedy affecting them, invite a tragedy affecting first responders, and just don't care. And what happens when they get caught, they go to a court, and they slap the wrist, $50, $100 fine, and they're done. You want that to collect them. How, many, how many dollars for each illegal unit? You're making money hand over fist. Um, the problem we had was that these issues stayed within the particular town. Um, that was a problem because that particular town, most of most of the most of the right, right, uh, just would not enforce these laws to the point that it would stop a landlord from getting away with what he's getting away with. I think we all know that this poor little business is not going to stop. So uh, what we did is we sat down with Wood and Brent, uh, we strategized, strategized a bit. We've already had some successes. We've had the health department on board. Our inspectors have gone out. They utilize the health law and the sanitary code because that comes out of the town, that comes to the county. We're the ones who hear the case. And believe me, we're not going to be accepting the slops and the rest. So we've been doing that. We've actually been, I think we've been two, two times for spring ago. We've out there already. Um, we're looking to fine tune this a little bit more because we have to look at the legalities of everything, make sure we're doing it right. And once we have this finalized, we'll be formally announcing it. Um, but it's going to be a multifaceted effort. You have to deal with the health department. Um, you deal with DSS because when you go in and into a situation where you have an immediate fire trap, we have families displaced. We have DSS on the scene to make sure that these people aren't, aren't victimized again. We 
was it victimized before? Did it place to go? Did it place them somewhere? So it's something that's, that we have had some successes. We have not been comfortable really getting into it publicly because we want to make sure that we have every T cross and every I dot, but certainly we are doing it. A couple of questions about the state controller and his approval of the county budget. Uh, if funding is restored for different contact contract agencies, uh, will this not guarantee a passage or approval by the controller? Will they keep talking about that process? Okay. Uh, just to backtrack, when the county borrowed ninety-six million dollars, uh, the bond, the, the bond, all right, to try to restructure our debt, we would have to go to the cash flow problems we had, which I talked about by January. How bad it was. That was a cash flow issue. Um, what happens is uh, the controller, the state controller, was included in the process, and the state controller has oversight of our budget. The budget has to be submitted. To the state controller, um, the state controller the team, the state controller will take it and will say, okay, it makes sense. And what they're looking at typically are your presumptions correct. If you are saying that, and it, this goes back to what I took before, there was a time in this county not long ago when there was a shortfall, and the presumption for sales tax was 160 million. Okay, we'll fix that. Budget finance chair turn around, 175 million. All right. Guess what happens? It doesn't get realized. You're 15 million in a hole. That's called the deficit. Those days are finished. The controller is going to look at expenses and look at revenues, at your, pre, your pre, presumptions in particular. Uh, they're going to look at our sales tax projections and weigh it compared to other counties and whatever they do as finance people, decide whether or not that makes sense. I think we're projecting 185 million this year. Um, but they look at the the key drivers in any budget, your revenue and expense, did it make sense? Is, is it, is it makes sense from a historical perspective? Um, you know, if you go in and say, guess what? We're going to bring in $200 million to sell What? I think it's not going to happen. Um, and that's going to be a problem. And the way this works is the budget submitted, it has been a proposed budget, has been submitted, the controller is looking at it now. At up in the urban, our finest department, as a matter of fact, looking at it. They will weigh in on it, okay? And they have to get back to the, the legislature, let's just have the budget now, obviously. They have to get back to the legislature, I think, 10 days or so prior to the date it has to be adopted. And don't quote me, I believe it's about 10 days. It's not a lot of time, I know that. The issue is obviously then, if the controller comes down and says, uh-uh, this is bad, we don't like this, the legislature now has to make changes, and that's not a good thing. So what I did promise the legislature is we would give the budget that makes sense. We should know to the question, we should know very soon whether or not the controller is going to view what we did favorably. And it's not about, it's not about the details of the budget. It's a matter of whether the budget makes sense, the revenues and the and the expenses make sense in their balance. That's what the control looks at. So if we start off that way, now we go forward and we go through budget negotiations, which is going to happen. And, and I know I didn't think there was much negotiation or conversation with the previous administration, with the legislature. That is not going to be the way I'm going to do it, and I made that clear today. Uh, and I'm hopeful I get the same exchange back going forward. Everything that happens from that point forward is going to have to be basically offset. There may be projections that maybe are only up or, or not as often as they could be, but this is all part of how it's reviewed. The best way we can do this is to make sure it's cooperative because if the legislature looks and says, you know something, there's X amount of dollars in the hospital, Could do two million less. Okay, we may or may not disagree when we talk about it, but the final analysis, the final auditor, is going to be the, the controller. So we have to both both branches of government have to be careful because if we go along with this and we submit it, and then the controller says no, now they've made a problem with us because now you are end up making an adjustment to the budget. And that'll be more damaging than anything else. So. Uh, the short answer is the controller is, a, is an angel on our wing. He is looking at what we're doing. 
if we veer off noticeably to some of the stuff I've seen in the past, he's never going to prove it. So we have to do it wisely and smartly. Back to the Sheriff's Department for a couple of questions. There are several people asking specifically about the units, specialized units. They're safe as far as the patrol and the mounted patrol, but everything else is would continue to exist under your proposed budget. The goal here is to ensure that the support units stay in place. That's the goal. The way that happens is up to the operational command which is the sheriff. We don't have the luxury from our position to just cherry pick and do a plus of civil service laws, obviously in public. We don't know how this all plays out until it actually starts being over. But that is that's the goal. The goal is to maintain the component that truly supports the towns and villages when it comes to BCI, when it comes to React, and actually only not all of us, because obviously Fox now doesn't have any for React rather than support battle. But that's the goal. Um, and that, that's at this juncture, that's about the best I really can answer that question. Back to the contract agencies for a minute, there's a few more. Uh, basically talking about the large swath of different tiers. I think somebody just wanted a little review on cuts were made across the board because you couldn't come, you know, you couldn't come to, uh, we yeah. couldn't get everybody together. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mentioned this earlier, we tried to, I'm sorry I keep moving on here. Try to pull back race. Um, you no, know, we did try to identify agencies, define them, and we just did not get a consensus when we had a discussion with the We wanted to have them, we wanted their input. You know, again, this whole question about whether or not the food management is important as a dance ball, in a central term. There was some who felt, you know, that's just as important. And I, okay, fine. In some areas, that's the way, that's fine. But we couldn't get, we could not get a consensus. So what we're going to do, going forward, and as far as this issue is concerned with the, with the budget this year, this had nothing to do with the agencies themselves. This was a complete, a complete cessation of funding due to budgetary constraints in its simplest terms. Not something we wanted to, not something we had intention to do. It was something we had to choose given what the circumstances we had. Uh, going forward, again, I don't know how this will play out in the next five, six weeks, but going forward, we're going to take the agencies. agencies. Some agencies are funded directly from contracts. So they're working and they're getting contracts. I'm sorry, I know that. And, they, and they're working to do what they do. This is just that separate funding stream that's in the, the three pages of the budget book that is no strings attached. It's basically X agency gets twenty thousand dollars and do it for the good work you use. That's fine. That's the that's the area that was hit in the budget. Not and to be very clear, if an agency has a contract with Rockland County to do a specific service, and it's under DSS, for example, that's still Okay, that's all being signed off on, no problems. But the, the unattached funding that goes to organizations and not to the not to it's not as important because it goes towards your operations. That is the area that was stopped. But also I want to be clear with the contract agencies, I've met with dozens of them since January. Dozens. And so is Mary uh Hargrove Bass, my community uh, relations director. Every agency I met with was told the same thing. Our goal is to try to maintain funding. Simple as that. But we can maintain it, or it can be goes low as zero. Depends on how the year goes. At that time, we did not have a signature on a contract to sell some bond. Uh, we had not sold, we had not bought and sold our bond. Uh, we had not seen generated savings yet, which was early in the efforts we made to get the organization back on track. You know, things such as overtime controls, accountability with the departments that started translating into a bottom line figure that was helping us out. That was all up here, we didn't know. So in fairness to the organization, we're saying, look, we're going to try to maintain you, but you may be happy, maybe nothing. We just don't know what's going to happen. If we go to a full global crisis, which we ended up in, uh, as it turned out, it will be nothing. So it's not a reflection on any agency, um, believe me, but a lot of these agencies I've, I've been involved in. I, I don't want to be in a situation, but it's just where we are with the circumstances we're trying to. This one final question. Uh, Mr. County Executive, uh, that's the, a, I'm in trouble. It starts with no, this, this is okay. All the cuts that are proposed, will they make Rockland County more affordable to live here? If you stem the 
increasing rise in taxes, by definition, you make it more affordable. Now, does that mean we have to have cuts to do it? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. We, what we've been doing is right size the organization. We've been making changes up and down, commission it down to work. We'll continue to do that. As this budget plays out, like every other county budget we go through, there's a process. It'll be a cooperative one. Nobody wants to hurt people, whether it be citizens or workers. I was up at Building A after the announced sale. I got up at Building A twice. January, I believe it was, and then March. Um, it is hard to speak to these folks and explain the difficulty of the situation they're in. Okay? But the reality was is that I'm the only one who knew it. They deserve to see me there tell them what's going on. Because it's my job. That's why I'm here tonight, because it's my job. And the reality is that it's a challenging time for Rockland County. We almost went over the cliff in January. I keep repeating that for a reason. We are in serious, serious trouble. We see a glimmer of hope. A bond ratings went up. The outlook went from neutral to positive. This is all good stuff. We are nowhere near. We took years to get into this mess. It took take years to get out of it. Hopefully methodical. This was not in the scheme of things when we looked at this. This was something we weren't expecting. And if, again, we hopefully we'll work through it. But it's going to take a number of years to get us out of this. But this is a critical year, 2015. If we missed step in 2015, the first year coming out of this mess, and we've done everything we could humanly do in 14 to support 15 by taking those actions early, those of you who are remotely involved in county government, it always amazed me. January, it was like a new world started in January. The county executive proposed a budget. didn't really matter what happened. Who cares? January 1st, we start voting. Okay. We took the opportunity to do things in 14 to make it to easier. We had not saved that $4.8 million. It was worse than me right now. And that's a big hole. So we did everything I believe that was really possible to try to get things on the right track. And 15, 2015 is a critical year for a number of reasons. I firmly believe to that question. If we come out of the gate in 2015 with a balanced budget, beyond all the issues now, if we just have a balanced budget and we move ahead forward, it's going to be the turning point for the county. That's how I feel. I feel positive in that I hope we can get here with the least amount of pain possible. What I'm saying here now to all of you is that's my goal and that's what I want. We're streaming this live on the internet tonight, so we're going to try to hold it to an hour. I have my card here. If there's any specific questions that you need researched or that you need to drill down on, uh, I'm available. I'm going to exchange emails and get information for you if you need me. Uh, other than that, thank you. Okay, I just want to thank you. I want to thank everyone for coming down. It was a lousy night tonight, but I want to thank all of you for being here. Thank you very much.